Good morrow, weary traveler. As you may have guessed, we are just doing a very, very casual video this week. I head to Florida tomorrow for a long weekend, and I've been wanting to talk about these updates for a while now, so ta-da! My barn is an absolute tornado. We have contractors working on our staircase right now. Here I am, <laughs> rock me like a hurricane. I thought I would talk about some of the updates. Just, just some real talk. Just very casual, chit chatty, cozy. Hopefully I can get some cleaning done. Said cleaning that I've been putting off for just about a month now. Basically my life has become, if I don't do it in a video or on camera, I don't do it at all. Cheers to that. I wanna talk about changes to this channel coming in this year. Patreon, which is very exciting. And then just general chit chat. What we've been up to, home renovation stuff. I've got this freaking adorable jumpsuit overall ensemble. And I look like a train conductor. And I like it. Before we get into chatting, I just wanna show you some of the stuff that I've been buying for the barn. I bought a few things recently that I'm really excited about. I've done a few cosmetic changes as well. You may have seen this if you follow me on Instagram, but if you watched my video about making this more whimsical, I mentioned that I didn't really like how stark the walls were compared to the rafters and everything. What I've gone and done, I bought myself a wood carving kit and I carved off the edges. I think I did a better job. That's my mess that I never cleaned up. <laughs> Just to make them look a little bit more worn down and I think it really, really helped. Perhaps for maybe the fourth time, repainted the whole barn. I made it look a little worn and dirty. They added some texture in here. It's dark around the edges and in the corners and up by the ceiling. And I tried to do sort of a gradient it was a little tricky to do and I'm not sure that I fully realized it, but that's okay because I kind of like how it looks. It's a bit life touch school picture day-esque, but I don't mind that. <laughs> and I think it looks way better now. Still want to make some fake beams to enclose all the windows. But anywho, furniture time. We have been antiquing quite a lot lately. And so of course I get sidetracked and buy stuff for my barn. I just bought... <sighs> Oh, holy crap. Wow. Nick is the one that lifted this out of the store and I, I did not realize how hefty this is. Holy mother of God. Ah oh, yes, adulthood. Getting super excited over chairs. Very industrial sort of shop chair. Kind of expensive, but I figured that I'm gonna use it all the time, so it's fine. Look at all those beautiful metal bits. She needs a little cleaning, obviously. I just bought her, but oh, I just think she's lovely. Nick made the mistake of saying that that's the kind of chair Walt Disney animators would sit on back in the day, and so he might as well have just taken my money at that point, because sold. <laughs> you holy crap. This pretty stool. Well, I guess it's more of a bench. It's got pretty markings. This cool plaque. Focus. Thank uh, nope. Focus here, please, camera. You son of a bitch. Yeah, I don't know, I just thought it was pretty. Before I bought this furniture, I had zero places to sit in here. And so I'm trying to make it a little bit more homey because the idea is that I want to spend more time out here. You know? I also bought... Oh, come on, little mama. Let me whisper in your ear. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, her. We saw her while looking for banisters and such for our staircase and I just, oh, I just thought she was so pretty. Oh, isn't she lovely? I thought so, so I bought her. I don't know that I'm actually gonna use her, but she is sort of my size. I did a very quick waist measurement using my purse strap and like marking off where it was pretty much my waist measurements. So I'm not sure about the bust or anything. I figured if I was gonna spend the money on it, I might as well get something that is relatively my size, just in case. She will probably mostly be decoration, actually. Oh yeah, baby. There we go. <laughs> I bought a little ship from the thrift store. I just thought it was really cute. I don't know what it is. I have such a thing with model ships. 
I think it's because my grandma had one that I still have in the house. I love everything piratey in 1800s ships, which is very ironic because uh, I have a variation of that fear of wide open water and man-made things in water. More specifically, the underside of boats and the underside of buoys as well. Blech. I don't know, it's ironic that I really love looking at ships and I think they're lovely and I love model ships, but don't make me touch one. Okay, and then last thing, he's a cute little guy. I need more knickknacks to go on my shelf, which is not something I thought I would ever say, but I've been slacking on knickknacks for this barn, so knickknacks, patty wax. Aside from all that stuff, I also bought a comfy bench to go underneath the window, which I'm actually gonna probably build right now. W what is this video, you ask? I, <laughs> I don't freaking know. Oh, it's heavy. You are large! <sighs> Cut this baby open. I almost bought the Kelly Clarkson brand. If you didn't know, now you know that she has a home decor side hustle. It's actually really cute stuff. What it is? What is this? Beefy, holy. What are you? Do I need this? Probably not. I'm gonna cut it. Leg inside. That would take on a totally different meaning if I were Hannibal Lecter. Oh boy. Was this a mistake? Yeah, probably. I hate styrofoam so much, but I'm going to save it just in case I need it for something someday. Yeah, this is fun content, right? Watch me f up some cardboard. Now that we've been in this house for over a year now, which is crazy, I've kind of just been trying to focus on getting it how I want it, especially this barn, because I do want to do more work out here. And so I really just want it to be a place that I walk in and I'm like, ah, that's swell. It's been a really long process because I get a little overwhelmed with it because it's just like one big empty space, basically a square. So I feel like I struggle to furnish it and know where I want things to go. We're getting there, I think. And then the house, we are as always just chipping away at it. People aren't lying when they said it never ends. Right now the contractors are working on the living room. Basically, if you didn't see my Instagram story, what we're doing is essentially deleting the coat closet in the living room. Both Nick and I have always dreamed of having beautiful historic banister and newel post. This house, while we love it so much, it didn't really have that. The stairs were added on in the 2000s. I mean, it had a newel post, but it wasn't anything crazy. We needed to rip up the carpet on there anyways. Don't worry, we're gonna get a runner because Frodo hurls himself down those stairs and it would not be safe without some sort of traction for him. We're moving the coat closet to a different location in the house so that more of the stairs are exposed. And we went to a salvage shop. We found a banister and a newel post. Whoa. <laughs> oh my God. I couldn't find any the other day, so that's... <laughs> this is the motherload. I think we got a match. <laughs> yeah. We got it home. It was caked in dust. We cleaned it up, buffed it out, and uh, it's looking pretty cool, so. And let me tell you, the salvage shop was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Basically, they have just pieces of history just chopped up and put in there because People, you know, tear down Victorian homes and for one reason or another. I walked into this one and there's just front entryways of Victorian homes. There was a whole Victorian pantry there. <laughs> but of course the wannabe archeologist in me just wants to know where everything came from and why and who walked on it. So it's a little hard not really knowing where our banister or new post came from. I could try to reach out to the shop and see if they have a record of where it came from, but I just think it's fun to give it a second life and knowing that it lived a whole life before us, I think is pretty cool. This might've been a mistake. This looks a lot more intense than I thought it was gonna be. So all that being said, that's definitely something that I'm gonna be doing this next year. 
home renovation stuff because you guys seem to enjoy it. And it helps me actually get stuff done. I can accomplish two things at once, getting home stuff done, but also working, so. <laughs> okay, now. I'm gonna finish putting the lights on this real quick. I realize building furniture and trying to soul talk uh, is not the best idea with the power of editing. Let's build this bench. So let's talk about, I guess, the changes to this channel going forward. This year, I really want to focus on full assing it. This is not becoming an OnlyFans. Get it? I feel like every year I kind of have the same conversation where the stuff that I want to make takes more than four days to make. <laughs> so that's if I'm making something in a week. Monday through Thursday, I work on it. Friday, I have to edit and post. This past year, I did three videos on one week off, which has been so, so helpful. <laughs> Even just having that extra week. It's still, you know, it's not enough time for me to make the kind of stuff that I want to make. I want to make even cooler things. House renovation projects, which obviously take longer than that. And that's being someone who's pretty good at multitasking too. If a project takes up all day, every day, then th there's no time to multitask. There's no time to also film something else at the same time. You know, it just, it just physically, there's not enough time in the day for me to do that. So I think my plan is scale down a bit on uploads. So instead of three videos on one week off, I think I'm gonna do every other week. Not exactly what people wanna hear, and I apologize for that, but I think that's where Patreon is gonna come in handy, which I'll explain a little bit later. But all the extra stuff, all the behind the scenes, that's all gonna live there. There will be almost weekly content or at least content to fill the gaps between this channel. It's not concrete because there will be weeks, I'm sure, that I'm gonna wanna put out maybe a shorter video or a video that doesn't require as much effort in filming and editing. So I'm not putting a hard, line on that every other week. Sometimes maybe it'll be two weeks in a row, sometimes it won't. I don't know. I've been putting this off for a while because you guys expressed to me how you love watching my videos almost every week and it's your weekly tradition. And while I'm so, so grateful for that, that has put a tough decision on my part just because, you know, I don't want to take that content away from you. I don't want to take, you know, your weekly traditions away from you, but I think for my own process and my own mental health as well. That's kind of a big part of this. This past year, I experienced the most burnout that I've ever experienced, especially in October. Now, I do this to myself. I am fully aware of that. So during Maxoween, you know, I'm doing all this stuff for Instagram and then I'm trying to do stuff for the channel as well and non maxoween related work stuff that I had to do and I, I lost count of the times that I stress cried honestly, and that's not healthy at all. I was still really enjoying everything that I do. I was so overwhelmed and so stressed all the time. Now that's obviously the extreme of that because that was Maxoween, so I was doing all this stuff that I don't normally do, but there are months where I am just really, really overwhelmed. It takes a huge toll on your mental health as well. I've been seeing a lot of content creators I follow going through sort of the same thing, sort of an untapped aspect of mental health that I don't think enough people talk about, regardless of how this sounds, because I know whenever content creators sort of talk about the downsides of social media as a career, I think there's a lot of negativity that can come with that because we should be grateful and all that stuff. And believe me, I am so grateful. I'm trying to do more bigger picture, feeling lucky, feeling grateful for everything, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't come with struggles. Too. In some ways, I struggle a lot more than I did in my nine to five corporate editing job because there's so much more pressure on yourself to always be pumping out this really clever, well-made, eye-catching, audience-grabbing content that you put this, this huge pressure on yourself. And then if it doesn't do as well as you thought it was going to, which obviously is subjective for everyone, it's really, really hard to not take that personally and like not let it kick you down a notch, which let me tell you, social media this year has offered me many slices of humble pie and I accept it because I love pie. It'll kick you in the shins so hard. As much as you try not to let it affect you and not to let views and numbers affect you, it straight up does. 
<laughs> it's something I'm working on. It's crazy because it's so personal. If you were to present something to a board of trustees, you know, you put your hard work into that and it sucks if they don't like it. But with content creation, it's so personal <laughs> and it's so yourself and your personality. And so if it doesn't reach the amount of people that you thought maybe it would, it sucks. And it sucks when you're sort of, your ego is kind of wrapped like Jumanji vines into everything you make and everything you put out onto the internet. I honestly feel like there should be therapists dedicated to that, to social media. And it sounds so silly. I think a lot of times content creators struggle in silence because we're afraid to talk about it. I myself, whenever I talk about this, I have people sort of jumping down my throat and saying that I shouldn't be complaining about stuff. So mental health is something that I'm really, really going to try to work on this next year. YouTube is a little bit different. You know, my videos aren't really going like viral or anything, but I have my core group of you all that I really, really enjoy bringing content to. And if bringing content to, here you go, <laughs> eat up now but I don't know, and, and if a video does better than other videos, that's awesome. But I'm really trying not to kind of get my hopes up with that. Obviously, I would like if a video were to randomly go viral overnight, that would be great. It's not something that I'm planning for. I have been really just enjoying making stuff that makes me happy and makes you guys happy and meeting you guys. I can't express how much guesting at Fan Expo this past summer meant to me because I got to talk to so many of you and it was very validating to know that my videos helped either during the quarantine or during now. <laughs> it's just such a good reminder of why I do what I do, not only because I love it, but because, you know, I think it helps giving you guys a little bit of escape and whimsy every now and then. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a journey and it ebbs and flows. I would say I'm in a better place now than I was even a couple weeks ago and who knows, it could go back down, but I'm enjoying where I am this very moment. With that being said, and with that sort of new video schedule being thrown into the ether, just kind of floating around there, let's talk about Patreon. Patreon. My plan for this year is to launch my Patreon. Freaking finally, I have been putting it off for just about three years now, and I am launching February 1st to hold myself accountable because otherwise I'll just keep pushing it back. February 1st, it will launch hopefully a ton of extra stuff there for you. I am going to do behind the scenes vlogs. If I do a project that takes me two weeks, you know, after the first week, you'll get an update of what I'm doing and makeup transformations. Don't really feel like they have a place on this channel per se maybe as a short, but the longer versions will be on Patreon. Travel vlogs, for some reason, people just really don't seem to enjoy on YouTube, but I really, really like filming and showing you cool stuff when I go places. And this is kind of me and Nick's year of travel, and we have some really cool trips planned, and so I would like to show you and share my excitement for that kind of stuff. Just pretty much anything else that I can think of, maybe live streams if I have time, a lot more casual hangout stuff, stuff that I can just really talk to you guys and sit down and chat. <laughs> I'm planning to do polls so you can vote on future projects. A lot of times I want to ask you guys what I should do for a certain thing, but I don't want to give away the surprise of what I'm working on. Patrons can have a little sneak peek at that and be little VIPs. For now, I am only going to do one tier and that is $5 a month. I really like what Christine McConnell does with her Patreon where it's $3, $7, and then the more expensive tiers. And I think I might do that eventually. But for now, I'm only gonna do one tier. So it's kind of in between the two of those. And then maybe eventually I'll add a more expensive tier and a cheaper tier. If you want to join, that's awesome. If you don't, please, I beg of you, don't worry about it. Truly part of the reason I've been putting this off so long is because I feel so guilty charging anyone money for my content. Please don't think that I'm pressuring anyone. This is purely, purely only if you want to. I'm still gonna have a lot of content on this channel. It's just, that stuff is just extra. It's just extra. <laughs> if money is tight, please don't worry about it. Like I said, in the future, I might have a cheaper tier option. But yeah, I don't know. I'm really, really excited. And I'm excited to have sort of a little 
community that's a bit smaller and that I can interact with a little bit more. Again, it feels really weird that that, you know, you have to pay for that, but I don't know. I think I just have to get over the stigma of that and just, and just do it. So that is the plan. February 1st, I am launching my mythological Patreon. I'll make another post once it's live, but you know, going along with the mental health aspect of everything. I think Patreon is really gonna help me not worry so much about if things do well. It's just pushing it out to my little Patreon audience. For me, it's just gonna take a lot of pressure off of myself. Ideally, I just, I kinda want my YouTube to be a portfolio of really cool stuff. So I think Patreon will come in handy where if I come up with an idea that may not either be long enough for YouTube I have a lot of ideas that are just gonna be quick videos, so I'm like, well, what's the point? Um, or just, I don't think a ton of people would be interested in. I can just put it on Patreon <laughs> for those that are interested. Okay, so enough of that spiel. I'm finally doing it, y'all. <laughs>